Hey, it's Michelle, your CXC Biology Tutor again. Welcome back to the Know the Differences series in which I go through with you important terms that you need to understand. In this final video, I'll be looking at immunity. And immunity is the body's defense against pathogens. A pathogen is any foreign organism that can cause disease. So we're going to look at the differences between natural and artificial immunity and you'll be able to see how these two types of immunity can either be actively or passively acquired. So by the end of this video, you should know the differences between natural and artificial immunity. All right, let's begin with the natural immunity. Now, the natural immunity is attained from birth to defend the body against pathogens. So this is the immunity that we're born with. So what you need to know is that natural immunity can be acquired in two ways. As I would have mentioned in the beginning, it can either be actively acquired or passively acquired. Now, the first point, the actively acquired natural immunity, this requires an infection. You need to get an infection in order to attain this type of immunity. And how this comes about is that when the pathogen gets into the body, the antigens on the surface of the pathogens, they're going to trigger an immune response. And by immune response, I mean the lymphocytes and the phagocytes are going to work together to pretty much get rid of the pathogen. So remember, lymphocytes are those which produce, those white blood cells which produce lymph, um, antibodies. So the key point to remember about actively acquired immunity is that your body will actually be producing its own antibodies against the antigens on the pathogens. So usually this type of immunity is long lasting. So a perfect example is someone who has chicken pox. When the chicken pox virus gets into their system, so say they are naturally exposed to the virus, say from hanging around a friend who had the chicken pox virus, and they pick up the infection the virus enters the blood, the white blood cells are going to recognize the antigens on the surface of the virus and realize that they're foreign. So eventually it's going to take a while to produce the antibodies against the chicken pox virus, but the antibodies would be produced after a period of the, the infection in which the person will actually get the symptoms and the signs of the disease. But in the meantime, as the antibodies are being um, produced, the lymphocytes, they also create what is known as these memory cells. So in the case, if this chicken pox virus was to enter the person again, the memory cells would recognize it, recognize the pathogens as foreign much quickly the second time around. So the person, although the, the virus gets into them, they would not experience the signs and symptoms of the disease again. So this is a perfect example of actively acquired natural immunity. So you have to get the infection first and that triggers your body to produce its own antibodies. And this type of immunity is long lasting. Now the other type of immunity, the passively acquired natural immunity, this is related to maternal transfer of antibodies. So this is the immunity that is going to be passed down from the mother to the baby. So it can occur while the mother is pregnant and the baby is in the womb. So the antibodies will pass across the placenta to the baby. And then it can also occur after birth when the baby can receive antibodies from the mother's breast milk. So there are two ways that passively acquired natural immunity can occur. So across the placenta while the baby is still in the womb and then via the breast milk after the baby is born. But usually this type of immunity, this passively acquired immunity is short lasting. It doesn't last as long as the actively acquired immunity because the baby is not producing its own antibodies. It's just receiving the antibodies from the mother. So eventually those antibodies are gonna wear off so the baby still needs to be able to develop, build up its own immune system. All right, let's go on to look at how the white blood cells work in the immune response. So this will help you to understand a little better how the lymphocytes and the phagocytes work together. And then we're going to go on to look at artificial, 
artificial immunity. Okay, so you can see here we have a lymphocyte on the left. And this lymphocyte, as you can see, is re you can recognize that by the large circular nucleus. Now, lymphocytes are the white blood cells that produce the antibodies. And the antibodies are represented by these white-shaped molecules. So, lymphocytes, when they see a foreign organism come into the body, the foreign organism, the pathogen, they would have these these antigens on the surface of their structure. So the lymphocyte would recognize that these antigens, these, these pathogens, they don't belong here. So they release the antibodies against the pathogen and that those antibodies are going to attach to the surface of the pathogen. In this case, you're seeing there are viruses and that is going to cause the, the viruses to clump together. So they clump together when the antibodies tag them. And this now is going to pretty much prepare a meal, I like to think of it that way, prepare a meal for the next type of white blood cell, which is the phagocyte. So you should remember that the phagocytes are the ones that eat, they engulf the pathogens. So when you have all these pathogens clump up and they're tied, the phagocyte will then recognize these tied pathogens and then come and engulf the pathogens to get rid of them. So you can see how the lymphocyte and the phagocyte work together to get rid of the pathogens during an immune response. Alright, so now you understand what's going on here with how the white blood cells work. Let's move on to look at artificial immunity. Now this is the immunity that is attained by deliberate introduction of a pathogen or antibodies against a pathogen. So unlike, our, um, unlike natural immunity, the the body is not making its own antibodies just naturally on its own. It, you have to deliberately introduce the pathogen or the antibodies against the pathogen. So this is usually by vaccine or injection. So let's, let's look at it. Let's look at the key points to remember. So once again, you can see that artificial immunity, similar to natural immunity, can either be actively or passively acquired. Now, with actively acquired artificial immunity, this involves a vaccine which would contain the pathogen itself, whether it is alive and weakened or dead, inactivated, whatever the case, the vaccine contains the actual pathogen that can cause disease. But the pathogen is not going to cause disease. The fact is, is that the pathogen would be, as I said, it's either dead or even if it's alive, it is weakened in a form, in a way that it does not actually cause the signs and symptoms of the disease. So it's not virulent, think of it that way. So when this pathogen enters the body through the vaccine, the pathogens are gonna trigger an antibody production, an immune response. So it's gonna be similar to the natural actively acquired immunity. The only difference here is that instead of the, the pathogen coming into the body through natural exposure, you're deliberately putting the pathogen into the body. So it's actively acquired because your own body now is going to recognize the, the, pan, the pathogen and produce its own antibodies against it. So the only difference here now is that the, the pathogen is purposely place into the person's body. So it's pretty much going to prime and prepare the person's body in the case of the real deal, in case they were ready to be exposed to the real pathogen. So this is going to be, it's going to be fairly slow acting, but it's going to usually last much longer than with the passively acquired, which I will look at now. So with passively acquired artificial immunity, you're actually going to be getting the antibodies or the antiserum or antitoxins against the pathogen. So usually this would be in the form of an injection. So think of someone who has gone to get a tetanus shot. That's a perfect example to explain passively acquired artificial immunity. So you need to get this tetanus shot immediately, say after you you stand up on a rusty nail and you don't want to come down with the tetanus disease, you don't want any lockjaw, you really, you would go and get the injection with the, anti, the antibodies to actually fight off the pathogen quickly. 
So the thing about passively acquired artificial immunity is that it's very fast acting. So it works very, very quickly, but it would only last for a short period of time. So it doesn't last very long. So you can see the differences here between the artificial actively acquired and the passively acquired immunity. So just to wrap things up, so you see this chart here, the different types of immunity I would have gone through. So immunity, that is the body's ability to defend itself against pathogens, any foreign organisms that come into the body so it wouldn't cause disease. And you can see it's broken down into the two types which we discussed, which I discussed, the natural and the artificial immunity. And the natural passively immunity, passively acquired immunity, is when you have a transfer of antibodies from the mother. So that's why you have in brackets the maternal. So think of the transfer of antibodies from the mother to the baby. While well, it's pregnant, while well, the mother is pregnant and the baby is still in the womb and then after the birth of the baby. And then with actively acquired immunity, you have to get the actual infection. You must be naturally exposed to this virus or bacteria, whatever it is, in order to get the infection. And then your body makes your own antibodies against the pathogen. Now with artificial Passively acquired, you just see antibody being transferred from the injection to the person, and it usually is fast acting. With artificial active, that is when you're going to be vaccinated against the, the particular pathogen with the actual pathogen. So remember, with actively acquired, you're actually in getting an injection, receiving a vaccine with the actual pathogen. All right, so I hope you have a better understanding now of the differences between natural and artificial immunity that are actively and passively acquired.